What's going on, crypto sports fans? Happy Friday to you. Today I thought I'd take a minute and explain delegated proof of stake. Delegated proof of stake is a mechanism, so they call it, for cryptocurrency. And it's a way to get consensus among a decentralized group of people. Big words for basically saying, how do you make decisions with a large group of people, but keep it decentralized and keep it secure? So in order to explain delegated proof of stake, I'd almost rather back up and talk a little bit about uh, proof of work. That is what Bitcoin uses as a mechanism. And it was the first. So it, it's important to kind of understand how that works. Um, and then we'll extrapolate into DPoS is what they call delegated proof of stake. But proof of work for Bitcoin, um, again, was, was, a, was a way for everyone to have a general ledger shared by the world that was secure. And the way that it works is instead of using people for the work, we use computers. And Bitcoin was originally designed so that you could download a, their software, the Bitcoin protocol, and run it on your server, and you could be a miner for Bitcoin. And what that means is, is that every 10 minutes, there's a contest that each of the nodes, is what they call the computers, each one of the nodes running that protocol uh, has to complete a puzzle. And the first node or computer in the world to complete that puzzle wins Bitcoin as a prize. So that's why mining is called, why it's why it's called mining is because at the end of the day, you're, you're working for uh, little bits of gold or Bitcoin in this digital world. So that's proof of work. Um, there's some benefits to proof of work and there's, there's some disadvantages to, to proof of work. And we're not going to go into all that today, but generally speaking, the, the neat thing about proof of work is it can be decentralized by thousands and thousands of computers. Now, what has happened is over time, there have um, developed uh, mining pools. And so people chose, instead of having their own miners, to join mining pools. And then the mining pools have, there, I think there's probably a handful right now, maybe less. So what happened is the Bitcoin that was completely decentralized with nodes or computers working all over the world now is in the hands of a few. Because the, those that operate those mining pools are generally, there's a handful of those people. So that it's still decentralized from that standpoint, okay? Um, but you get the picture. Okay, so let's move into delegated proof of stake. Delegated proof of stake was neat, is neat because it is much faster than proof of work. Proof of work by definition is not going to be fast because you have to prove that you did the work. Well, that takes time. Work takes time. You have to make it take time or anyone can do it. And there's no reward at the end. Delegated proof of stake is very fast and agile. And here's how they do it. Instead of having thousands of computers all over the world running the protocol for Bitcoin, on delegated proof of stake, which let's just use EOS as the first example, delegated proof of stake uses a hundred or so computers around the world. Okay, you think, well, that's much less decentralized. Mm, hang on. The, what they do is they split it up and they say, okay, the top 21 are going to be the, what they call block producers, like Bitcoin produces blocks, so does EOS produces blocks. And they elect, out of this pool of 100 or so block producers, they elect the top 21, and this is arbitrary because you can change that number, but the point is, is there's 21 block producers that have been elected by the coin holders to run that protocol and produce the blocks. So how is that more decentralized than Bitcoin with thousands of computers? Well, remember Bitcoin is actually a handful of mining pools are somewhat in control where delegated proof of stake, it would be 21 
block producers that are in control, which would be four times as decentralized. And that's, and, and the way they do it is the, these 21, they produce the blocks and they do two a second and it happens uh, randomly between them. So you never know who's gonna be the one producing the block and that's why it's secure, okay? Just like in Bitcoin, you never know which one of the one computers out of the thousands is gonna complete the puzzle first. Delegated proof of stake, you, you don't know which one is gonna be producing the block next. Um, so both very secure, this one much more agile, but what happened is EOS is built on top of an, uh, uh, a protocol called EOS IO. And that's confusing to some people. EOS IO is, you can copy it. It has been copied. There's Telos, there's Boz, there's Meet One, there's other chains like EOS. EOS just happened to be the first that have developed since. Um, EOS is experiencing some centralization, what we consider centralization, because right now a lot of the top 21, what used to be spread out through the United States, those top 21 have, have become more China slash Asia than anything else right now. So a lot of our organic block producers that were in that top 21 on EOS have been pushed out and they've been pushed down below the top 21. Now, we would, of course, consider that a bad thing. I don't think China does. And according to them, it's still very decentralized, right? How that all works, I don't know. But what I do know is that Dan's plan for delegated proof of stake on EOS or EOS IO was that you could copy the technology. It's simply the governance that's being centralized, not the tech, right? So you could copy the technology and start a new governance system with your own rules. And that's what's happening. And there's a lot of them that have popped up. Um, but I hope that explains delegated proof of stake a little bit without getting too much into the tech side. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for stopping. We'll see you next time.